After a few very busy days getting this unfinished Nissan GTIR project running and roadworthy, it's time to get it tuned. We got really lucky with our base map. It just works, the car drives, the coils are good, the injectors are good, everything's good. Thanks to our Haltech Elite 1500. And speaking of Haltech, now we are gonna go there and dyno this thing and see what kind of power we can make and then hopefully drive it home. Made it to Haltech. This is Scotty, otherwise known as Tuning Fork, absolute tuning legend in my book. Um, Nissan Pulsar GTR, what do you reckon? I really like them. SR20, it's a good thing. It, yep. it's, it's, a, it's been around forever. I'm a bit sort of passionate about N14. Mm. I learned to drive in an aspirated one, like a oh, four door. Really? So yeah. it's your era? Yeah, N14 Pulsar Triple S that, yeah. that I used to pinch off my brother all the time. <laughs> Did my L's test in yeah. an N14. Yeah. So what's your experience with these particular engines and sort of power um, figures we might expect to see? Nice thing, uh, it'll be limited by the turbocharger. Yes, factory turbo um, as far as we know. You've done all the right stuff to clean it up after it's been sitting around for a while. It has a long time, yeah. You've given it a birthday so that we'll tune it, hopefully have no dramas mm -hmm. and it's all going to be just reliable. Um, if, if it was 150 to 180, if we yeah. kind of aim somewhere in there, yep. uh, the thing will go great. Hopefully you'll never have to do a clutch or a starter motor on it. Yeah, especially not today. Yeah, you know uh, where the starter motor is, right? Yeah, I'm not, I, don't even, I, I know yeah. about the clutch thing. I don't even <laughs> want to think about the starter motor thing. So, um, being that a lot of the work has been done in your base mat, which you did separately yeah, from yeah. your experience, so uh, is it may, more so now a matter of just seeing what this particular combo does with this particular intake and how it breathes and everything? Yeah, so with this, um, the other day we put together a map together to kind yep. of just put everything in the right places, all the inputs and outputs set up, yep. roughed in sort of what I thought the fuel map and the initial map would look like. Um, you've started it, you've driven it around and done whatever. Yep. So now it's time to sort of calibrate everything to yes. make sure we've got the right, exactly the right size injectors mm -hmm. uh, oh, set up in the software. Yes. And then just go through and we'll go through every load point Every RPM site will mm -hmm. go through all of the speed limits in particular to yes. make sure that the tunes bang on where you drive the car the most. Right. Yep. Then we go to the fun bit, we do the power runs, we make the huge number and... <laughs> huge number. It's Which might be quite uh, conservative, but for this car will be awesome. No, that... This with 100 kilowatts would be fun. This with 50% more than that even would be awesome. It's all about the gain, I suppose. Yeah. So if the thing had what, 110, 120 kilowatts yeah. and it leaves with 150, 160... Awesome. Big difference. Yep. And 20 years ago, if you got that increase, yeah. you'd be like mind blown, right? Yeah. These days we just get so so used to these massive numbers. Oh, I've got a GTR with 700 horsepower and you go, great. But legitimately yeah. like 150 kilowatts in this will be great on the road. Yeah. Awesome. And it's a really good example of an N14. Like yeah. very unusual to see one that looks like this now. Yep. I know you've waited so long time and time again. All you say is that I did you wrong. So you turn your back on the world pretending While getting the car warmed up, double checking our wiring configuration and starting some low load tuning, we noticed some weird smells and some weird liquids coming out of the old Nissan. So Scotty, we've got some, some weird issues like coolant bubbling over, but that may have just been a burp because it hasn't, this car's been sitting for so long it may not have had a hard enough time and on the base map we weren't giving it a hard enough time to kind of burp the, the yeah. cooling system. I think it's come back to life, so it did overheat, like it did get hot. Yeah thing went into engine protection but then now we can't get it to happen again and it seems to be sitting on the thermostat cool. so thermostat may be stuck just yes. because yep or it has a massive air pocket that yep. we need to bleed through Old um, car stuff probably what's more worrying though is it looks like one of the calipers either front or back or potentially both is dragging and yeah. that's a drag because like we can't have it sitting on the brake 
the whole time, it's a waste of time. So that might send us home on a tilt tray, possibly. I'm wondering with this. I'm definitely nervous about the brake thing because yeah. the pedal feels it's really hard to explain. The booster works. Yeah. But you know you get like the brake feel how you like set up and squeeze. You set it up, you can yeah. feel where it starts to grab. Yeah. It almost feels like it doesn't have a booster. So it's got yeah. about an inch like of something and then whatever you do, you're just stuck yeah. there. So it, it does feel like a caliper sticky Brakes have or had something. Rotors and pads, but also again sitting for so long. Caliper yeah, rebuild, something yeah, like maybe. Is it a piston. We jam? checked the, we checked the pistons and they looked alright. We moved them in and out, but yeah, look, again the age of the car, this is old car stuff, right? So you don't know. Yeah. No. yeah. Our brakes don't seem to be dragging, so we decide just to monitor them and press on. Sure enough, some of the wiring was incorrect thanks to the previous few ECU installs and uninstalls. We're now able to go through and confirm each input and output is behaving properly using our pinout diagram and cross-checking that with the I.O. configuration in the tuning software. With everything now working correctly, we can begin to increase the load put on the engine and work our way up to some power runs. missing all the mid-range. So I'll just, I just want to tinker a little bit and just get, sort of, just figure out what's actually going on because sure. what, the way that torque curve works, yeah. I'd love to see it come up and then clutch slip and go, yep, perfect, that's 100% yeah. that's what's going on and there's sure. no other magic here. Yeah, the power curve looks different to what I'd expect. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. The car's different and this is a mystery, isn't it, this one? Uh, this, I don't think, I think that it's probably more um, not having the confidence to go, sorry, needs a clutch, because you can't smell it or hear it. No, it doesn't um, sound like the same as what I would expect either, but it's also buried in this big four-wheel drive mystery Nissan box. It is, and once we get just a bit, of, we'll just put a bit of boost in it so we've got sort of the, the baseline, and yeah. once we see the baseline with our road speed here, our road speed reported, yep. and the car, and then the difference in the RPM versus the RPM here, we mm. can then say, all right, well, something's not right. Cool, all right. For everyone that's sort of curious for all the numbers, um, this thing's got, it's on petrol, yeah. but 98 dot octane petrol. Yep. It's got an air to fuel ratio of 11 and a half to one, just about everywhere yeah. while it's on boost, or I should say above, uh, above 130 odd kilowatts. Mm -hmm. Can even go into our actual ignition timing numbers if you like. So as it comes on at about 4,500 RPM, it's got five and a half degrees of timing, up to 11 and a half degrees of timing at the top, which yep. is is relatively low yeah, as it well. Is. Yeah, it's not aggressive. Um, it's got 16 pounds of boost. Yeah. Well, that would get it there. On an so, engine that's breathing well, 16 pounds would get it there, wouldn't it? It'd be. It's high, but it's in the ballpark. Yeah. So. Uh, one of the other things is, what size did you say that, that your, your advertised injector duty cycle? Or your, sorry, your, your injectors? 950s. So if we've got 950cc injectors, you know, everyone at home can figure this out. At the very top, where we're claiming that it's making 213 kilowatts at all four wheels, it's using 59.2% injector duty. Sounds about right. Don't so it's in the ballpark because something like Cool. A 500 or 550cc injector on petrol yep. on a four-cylinder yep. is going to be making 220, 230 kilowatts, something like that. Cool. So it's all roughly adding up. The thing that is confusing us is this weird hump in the torque. Yeah, it's the delivery to the to the trip to the rollers that yeah. seems to be a bit funny, isn't it? And if that wasn't if if that was nice, I'd say awesome. But I tend to think that... A bit more investigation. Well, that's the good thing about using a dyno, right? You, you can, can just, figure this stuff out because on yeah. the road you're scratch, constantly scratching your head. And you, yeah, you just never know. It would be so complicated. So well, using the data logging is the magic for sure. For sure. Well, 
we're out of here with 200, just under 220 kilowatts. Um, the coolant seems happy. Everything seems to have come back to life. Since it burped for the first time and it no. seems good. So. so stuck thermostat or it's just burped a bit through. Yep. At the moment, things for a car that you've revived that has been sitting around for so Almost long. Almost a decade, yeah. Um, first time I've had a problem with brakes, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like, same. Actually, never had anything um, like that myself. Other than that, the engine, an SR out of a GDIR with a solid cylinder head, mm. um, should sound a lot more noisy than this. It actually sounds tame. really good for yeah. what it is. Like, really good. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like a normal, modern turbo yeah. thing. Um, awesome. Well, that was hard and easy at yeah. the same time. It has been a more tricky but more rewarding one because resurrecting a GDIR Pulsar, like... Yeah. That is, um, Worthwhile, I reckon. Yeah. All right. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much. I look forward to driving Good it now out. anyway, now that it's got done some numbers in Let's it. Let's figure out what it does, yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Scotty. Pleasure. Our peak power figure is impressive for an otherwise untested car. The mid-range is a bit soft, which a new clutch will solve later down the track. But for now, it drives and it sounds epic. <laughs> what a mad nugget. Hang on. This is in the way. You can get these from the Mighty Car Mod shop, by the way. Air fresheners, they smell like melons. The JDM best kind of melon melons. smell. Amazing. Amazing. Anyway, Martin, here it is. The Nissan, car has been saved. Nissan life. It's good, isn't it? I just, I remember. It feels good. It feels really it feels good. really good. It doesn't feel like it's as old as it is. It just, it feels really tight. Yeah. It feels... It's just, it sounds good. It's... <laughs> it winds out. Turbo sounds good, exhaust sounds good, it's not too firm but it's nice and solid, it's not too loud. I don't know what car reviewers say, they can talk about stability and on rails and all this other bullshit, but the fact is it just, it feels good to drive it, it makes you smile and it's so small, you're in this compact little nuggety yep. Nissan soy small, sauce smell and sweaty sauce. thing, it's just <laughs> awesome, it's so good. <laughs> I love the dose. It's the so intake, great. I'm really, really happy with how that intake turned out. It like was it's great, neat. Man. There's room for the battery that's in there, and like it sounds awesome. I you think. did an awesome job, man, on all your like fabrication stuff. Really, really cool. Thanks, like, man. Like it's, it's great. It works. It's functional. And they're fairly basic fabrication skills, but that's the good thing about a car of this era. It's like you don't need to have this massive knowledge. Like if you just you can weld some stuff, you can cut some metal up and you can make some bends like that, that solves the dump pipe and the intake, which honestly is a lot of the time what needs fixing on these. Yes. If you change a turbo, you've got to change a dump pipe or change an intake and you free up a bit of horsepower because we got rid of that airflow meter. And we fixed the temperature sensor. We accidentally put it on the wrong side of the intercooler. So you might have noticed on the dyno, it went to the right side. Now we've got two. Yes. Um, so we can measure the, um, the, the difference in temperature across the intercooler, which is a bonus because we've got heaps of spare inputs on that ECU which is which is mad yeah. and it's worth saying also like this car when we got it not like nothing worked properly like it would barely start and turn over like there was stuff missing it was neglected and you know what though that's not kind of that's not obscure for cars from this era because a lot of people are just leaving them now like they just don't care about them but yeah. they are as I said like a couple of videos ago like for a lot of people including me and you this era this is like this is like the cream of JDM, I reckon. Like this is just like, and I don't mean the cream is in it's the best quality car. It's just the stuff that I think is the most exciting. Well, you know, a lot like, of cool stuff coming out in this era, and manufacturers are really putting some effort in. And they're trying to win, win rallies, and they're trying to win drifting, and trying to win all these different kind of racing. And there was like a lot of interesting things coming out, and this was definitely one of them. Yeah. Even though it's a bit of a parts bin car, we've since you know worked out. Yeah, yeah. As S fifth S. You know, 13 bits and bluebird bits and whatever else. Yeah, so. even the little thing that you open the boot with is just like straight out of an S13. You know, yeah. like it's just you can see that they've just taken stuff from wherever they could, wherever they can find. <laughs> A lot of people ask us, like, when you finish working on cars, like, what do we actually do with them? Do we keep them? Do we store them? Do we part them out? And sometimes it's actually all of the above, depending on what it is. But with this car here, something that we were so excited by, we thought that we would kind of take the approach of an ethical fisherman and do a do a catch and release you know you catch the fish you go there it is 
um, give it a little kiss, do what you need to do and then send it back out. And that is exactly what's happening with this car. We feel like we've saved it. We feel like our job is done, but you know, the parking that we have is also full with some stuff that you're gonna see in the next couple of videos. True. Um, and so this is actually going to a good friend of ours uh, who's had dibs on it. And so it's gonna pass on to him. And then the question is though, what happens there? I mean, how much better is this car if you spend another twenty thousand dollars on it and put another two hundred kilowatts? Like, yeah, I mean, how much better is it? Look, that'd that'd be awesome. But you know, the gearboxes, as many of you know, are pretty weak in these cars, especially when you start turning the wick up. Um, so if you put a lot more power through it, very very high chance of blowing that up. Um, you've also got SR twenty. If it's an unopened stock one, then they are limited at you know sort of three hundred horsepower or a bit more, depending on your other mods. So. Um, yeah, is it worth spending huge money on and making it the next big monster? Probably not. Uh, but what I'm happy is that we've brought it back from, you know, most projects get to like 80, 90% finished and then stop. Yeah. It's like we've got it to 100% where it's a working registered driving thing with, you know, a good amount of power in it that's nice to drive, everything works. And I'm happy to sort of leave this one there. Yeah, it could just be enjoyed now. And ultimately that's what cars are for. You gotta remember, you can spend a lot of time learning and doing whatever it is that you need to do in your shed, but actually getting out and driving it, hanging out with other people, that's what you should be doing with your cars. Eventually, hopefully that should be the end goal anyway. And that is what's gonna happen with this. Yep. But we've got some other cars to save. And um, <laughs> there's gonna be a couple more catch and releases yep. because if we see something that needs to be saved we're gonna save it <laughs> um but Got then there's also going to be a couple of keepers yeah, also I think so. uh you know i think this kind of if you can't tell already this era of cars for me particularly is like this is when i was hooning around castle hill you know having a few runs up hastings road in dural uh this is like yeah. i love this stuff so there's going to be a few keepers as well but for now and we send it out into the ocean, Martin. I, I think so. And I mean, we did say, you know, this is this is the best two-door JDM car ever made. Well, yeah, maybe. Well, maybe not. Is it though, Martin? Is it? Is it? I don't know. There's I some mean, good ones out there. There are some it's good ones out there, and maybe, maybe there's going to be another two-door JDM car in the very next episode Who that knows? we've already caught. <laughs> we've already caught on our big dong of a fishing line, Martin. Maybe. We're reeling it in right now. Can Maybe. you feel it? Maybe. Can you taste it? Uh, you can tune in and see that on the next episode of Mighty Car Mods. Thanks everybody for watching the GTIR series. Martin, where's our little JDM melon air freshener? It's here. You can get these from our shop uh, and we'll send them to you anywhere in the we world. Will. And I think cars smell like JDM melons. I think all that's left to do fruit. is take this car out onto a mad windy road, go for a drive, get some mad shots of it then go and get a ginger beer. Sounds perfect. See you later, everyone. Sounds so good. If this little car has taught us anything at all, it's that there's joy to be found in fixing something and leaving it in better condition than you found it. What was once a garage ornament is now a running, driving turbo nugget ready for some adventures back out where it belongs, on the road. Thank you.